So welcome everyone. Uh, this is the team's voice and calling lunch and learn how to get started. My name is Betty Kwan and I'm on the marketing team here at ProServe IT. It's our pleasure to host you today. We have with us Mike Fine, your account manager at Microsoft and our team's solutions architect, Tony Caproletti. So before we launch into the presentation, I'd just like to mention a few housekeeping items. Uh, you should all have received an Uber Eats voucher during this hour. If you didn't, please reach out to uh, Mike or myself and we'll make sure that you get it. Uh, I would ask that you please keep yourself on mute during the presentation portion, but feel free to ask any questions by typing in the chat and we will answer your questions at the earliest opportunity. We want to make this an interactive uh, experience as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I just mentioned, we will be recording the presentation and you will all receive a copy for your reference. Just look out for an email from me in the next couple of days. And with that, I'll ask Mike to get us started. Thanks, Betty. <clears throat> well, everybody, I want to say thanks for joining. Um, again, you know, what we wanted to do was uh, provide a smaller environment for our nonprofit customers that align to myself and ProServe IT was nice enough to help us out with that. So, you know, I want to say thank you to ProServe IT for helping out here, but I also want to say thank you to you guys for, for joining again. Um, our role here is to just help educate you guys on what can be done uh, from a team's calling perspective and voice perspective. So, again, thanks to everybody who's here, and I'm going to turn it over to Tony uh, to go ahead and educate all of us. Thank you, Mike, and thanks everybody for joining. I think, again, what we'll do is we'll probably try to keep this as interactive as possible. And now that I'm thinking about it, if you are familiar with Teams, you can look up at the top uh, right. If you have the app, actual application open is, if you have a question, why don't you go ahead and click up here and then click on the hand button, raise your hand, and we'll, we'll call on you to answer questions that way. Maybe we could try that. Or if you want, feel free to type them into the chat window here, and we'll try to monitor them and answer them as much as we po as much as possible. So we've got about an hour. Uh, I don't know if we'll we'll need the whole hour, but I, I assume that there's going to be quite a number of questions. Um, each of you might be at different, um, I guess, phases of your team's adoption experience. So uh, again, if you're if you're if you're at a certain level and this stuff is uh, you know old to you and you already know it. You know, please be patient. There may be others who don't have understand, uh, you know, understand that at this point. Um, teams calling is is something that is it's a First great service. Forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. <laughs> so somebody was on, uh, I guess, off mute there. But yeah, anyway, you might be at different stages of Teams voice um, at your organization or level of understanding. So what I'm what I intend to do here is really just to educate you on what uh, some of the differences are with Teams calling, some of the things that you know you you can do, and maybe the things that you can't do. Um, but oh, sorry, you said you're not seeing the slide, Betty. Make sure I get there well, first. We, I can see it now. We can okay. See it now yeah, we I just put up this here. You're seeing my screen, and I, I presume. Yep. Okay, I just was showing everybody that they can hit this here by this little button, raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Okay, thank um, you. No problem. Or if you want to, you know, put some applause up there, that's fine too. <laughs> but anyway, just getting started here, again, Teams is Teams voice essentially is a, a full-fledged telephony uh, solution, right? So a lot of customers now are, are I'm talking to are, are in that stage where they feel comfortable to make that transition from that old PBX that they have either on-premise or uh, even a hosted solution with their, their carrier and transitioning it into Microsoft Teams. So I'm assuming that most of you on this call are, are in that position at this point and you're just trying to figure out what what's required to, for me to turn Teams on and um, some of the things I need, that I need to be to consider here. Um, obviously, from a Microsoft standpoint, if you're already using Teams, um, if you already if you have an, a subscription to Office 365, then uh, there's a good chance that you have a, a subscription that includes Microsoft Teams. So, 
you know, being mostly nonprofit organizations, uh, most of you are probably using the the enterprise license suite, either E3, E1, E3, or E5. Um, if you're not, that's okay. Teams can still be used with some of the other, you know, small business um, SKUs as well. So don't worry if you're not using one of the enterprise SKUs. Uh, and I guess one of the easiest things, um, I guess, to get started with using Teams is most people end up just turning up and enabling the audio conference feature because that really what that does is that allows you to to host conference calls with others and give them the ability to dial into a meeting uh, through a you know a bridge number versus having to use the you know the Teams app uh, or the the web client to dial into the meeting. So that's a nice feature. That's usually a, an easy way to get started. Uh, on top of that, again, enabling Teams Voice. Um, there's a few requirements that we're going to go over that um, you're kind of forced to do from a Microsoft standpoint, and, and then there's some licenses associated with that. So. I'll just use, I'm not going to PowerPoint you to death in this in this call, uh, but I will pull up some slides that I use just to talk through, you know, some of the service features that are in Teams and then and try to delineate those differences um, for you. Again, so again, please feel free to ask questions. I'm happy to, happy to answer them. Let me just click through here. Just me. I'll talk about some of these agenda items, some of the benefits, features, use cases. Again, we're going to go over uh, PSTN voice and some direct routing scenari scenarios and licensing, and maybe talk about some uh, next steps after that. Let's go forward. I'll skip this one for now. So again, telephony options. So in dealing with Teams voice with Microsoft, there's really two ways to use the service. One is that you would take your numbers that you own with the carrier that you have today and then port them over into Microsoft. So at that point, Microsoft would be your carrier here. Uh, again, when, when Microsoft is your carrier, you're kind of put into a position of you need a specific license in inside Office 365. And that license is considered it's called the you know, Teams phone system license. So you need that as a default to be able to even use the, the phone system uh, outside of the audio conference features. Okay, So that's kind of step one. Um, the other way to use Teams is called direct routing. And I think it's on the next page here, yeah. So direct routing is essentially bringing in a carrier uh, that offers uh, SIP services that can connect into, into Teams, uh, the data center. So as you can see, you see in this diagram here, we've got a kind of back end, we've got the carrier, the telco here, as you'll notice, and that carrier is providing a service which hosts uh, an SBC device or devices. And that SBC is, stands for Session Border Controller, which essentially acts as a, as a gateway to connect from you know that SIP session into the Teams environment. So they're providing that service, and then Microsoft has a, you know, a number of um, number of carriers inside the US and Canada and uh, you know other parts of the world that support that service and, and then they offer that service right so most of your major carriers are going to offer this service um, wherever you're, wherever you're at uh, in the state that you're in so <clears throat> I'm seeing that most most customers that I talk to these days are are looking at direct routing as a, as a, an option of choice primarily because of the dial plans, right? So a lot of the carriers are you know, offering you a dial plan or a calling plan that will allow you to dial you know, within North America or even within the United States, um, kind of unlimited, right? Whereas if you're looking at, at Microsoft as the carrier, uh, you're now kind of tied into an additional license there, which is a, a calling plan, right? So we talked about the phone system license, and then the other license is, is audio conferencing as an add-on. And then if Microsoft is going to be your provider, then you need a calling plan to, to provide you those minutes, right? And each, each user has to have a calling plan to be able to, to dial out to the outside world. So let me pause for a second 
and ask if anybody has any questions. No, no questions yet? Okay. I would have thought about I would thought I would have thought I had confused you all by now. Um, no questions around licensing just yet. Okay, perfect. Uh, let me back up. Let's make sure I go through. So, again, if if Microsoft is going to be your carrier, uh, and that that's perfect, perfectly fine, right? So, if they're going to be your carrier, you need a phone system license. You need a calling plan license for, for each user, and you may even need an audio conferencing license. So that is something that is not required for every user. That's only if you need to host uh, conference calls in this case. Oh, Tony, um, we do have a question. Okay. Did I miss one? And who is it from? I saw a hand up. Oh, sorry, that was me, uh, Mike. <clears throat> so on licensing, the... So you get the, I, I guess, the license for the user, and then you get the dial plans. On both scenarios, you have to get the same VoIP license for the user. Is that like an E5? or I, I don't remember which license. So users that have an E3 on the direct plan, I would still need to upgrade their individual license. Well, no, that E3 or that E3 plan, if you're, as, as an example, that's mm -hmm. kind of your baseline license. That gives you access to all your other Microsoft services it gives you, you know, your exchange license. Um, and then for Teams, it gives you the Teams client to use, right? And you can right. do all kinds of all the uh, collaboration uh, options and, you know, file sharing and, and things like that. You're, you're able to do that. However, if you want to use the telephony portion, um, you'll need to add on, uh, you know, some voice components here. Let me just bring it up, make it easier for you guys. So before, just as a disclaimer here, these license prices, these are only just kind of a reference, so please just take it as a reference at this point. Um, I'm just kind of going over them to show you kind of what is required. But so you had that E3 here, you would need to add on the phone system, you know, per user, and then on top of that, if Microsoft is going to be your carrier, uh, you would probably ha you would have to add on one of these these calling plans, one of the three typically. Okay, so you've got domestic 120. You've got the regular domestic plan, whoops. And you have the domestic and international calling plan, which gives you a subset of um, you know, domestic minutes and it gives you some minutes for international dialing as well. In addition, not in addition, but Microsoft came out with a new SKU recently in the past year or so called uh, Business Voice. And so what Business Voice includes it kind of includes, you know, the bundle of the, the three licenses, like it includes the phone system, it includes an audio conference license, and in the business voice one, it also includes a calling plan, which is this domestic calling plan of 3,000 minutes, roughly. So does that, does that make sense so far, Mike? Or per user? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And then the business voice without calling plan is just is what it says that it comes with a phone system license and audio conferencing. And then kind of the reason what that SKU is for is that those that are uh, going to use a direct routing feature and get that, you know, those minutes from the, the third party carrier, that would be, you know, potentially good to have that plan because it bundles the two licenses together, give you a bit of a price break instead of buying them both, um, you know, uh, I guess a la carte. That makes, makes sense. Any other questions around that particular part? Okay. Uh, there's also for the organization now, you're probably at, thinking to yourself, if I have some meeting rooms, I've had, uh, you know, maybe you have a common area phone or a lobby phone or things like that. There are also licenses that are um, not mentioned in here, but let's say you have a boardroom where you're, you know, going to host conference calls or you just want to be have people to be able to go in there there are specific licenses for those meeting rooms and then if you had like a lobby phone uh, those would be probably considered like a common area phone uh, if a user wanted to dial out um, with one of those phones so there are some other other licenses such as that 
I see that there's another question from, is it Craig? Yeah. Okay, Craig. Um, I do want to kind of ask, so I don't think I was aware that there was a domestic calling plan. It's like a 120 minute plan. Um, and then I think I understand that the other domestic calling plan also has so many minutes associated with it. Is that right? Or is it unlimited minutes? Domestic calling plan here? Yeah. Domestic calling plan, um, as far as I understand, it has 3,000 minutes associated okay. with it. So roughly. with the 120 minute plan, so we do have some users that I think want a phone, but actually don't actually do a lot of calling. So I could actually see kind of pivoting to a 120 minute plan. Um, mm -hmm. What happens when they go over those minutes? Okay, good question. Very good question. So let me, um, let me answer something else first. Okay. That these particular plans, let me clear something up. All of the plans, like let's say you've got, you know, you're in Texas, okay, and you're in uh, you're in Houston, Texas. You've got the majority or all of your users in Texas, uh, Houston, Texas, and they all uh, have the domestic calling plan, right? So that would be, let's say that there's 10 users in in Houston, and they all have a domestic calling plan. So that gives them 3,000 minutes each. Uh, if you multiply that 3,000 times 10, that gives you 30,000 minutes. So what Microsoft has done is that they've pooled the minutes, or allowed you to pull the minutes if you have users with the same calling plan in the same region. Makes sense. So those 10 users in Houston now have 30,000 minutes to share between them uh, per month, right? So you don't have to worry about going over your minutes for 3,000. And it goes the same thing for the, the domestic 120. If I've got five users there in the same region, uh, with the domestic 120 plan, you've got, you know, that 120 times five, right, which is going to be 600 minutes. At that point. Okay. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And then maybe it's just a follow up in the admin portal. Is there a way to kind of understand or see minutes as they're being used? Um, I believe that there is. Yes, I believe that there is. Um, I haven't. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in that admin portal, but I, yeah, you should be able to see it from a um, from if you have Microsoft as your as your carrier, you should be able to see that. The other thing I wanted to point out too is that the other way to address the add-on minutes, right? So let's say you've got a you've got a, a, some users that are want to dial long distance, right? Because none of these plans, except for the international one, come with like long distance uh, charges that they want to call you know, Ireland or UK or something overseas. Uh, the way that that would be addressed is uh, something called communications credits. And so what that is, is if you think of what uh, they used to have as a, like a prepaid calling card, uh, what Microsoft does is they, they take like a, you buy a prepack, prepaid bunch of uh, minutes. Let's say you you prepay like, a, you know, $100. You, you put that inside the tenant, the Microsoft tenant, you buy that hundred dollars, and then when you set up, we set up, or somebody sets up communications credits. What it does is, if you want to call, you know, Ireland or UK or something, um, it'll draw down from that hundred dollars, and then you know, once it gets to the point where it's going to run out, um, it'll notify you to say you're getting short on 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 minutes. Um, do you want to top up your minutes, and you can just renew it like you do uh, anything else. That makes sense for everybody. All these calling plans, do you have an incoming number also, or are these strictly outbound calls? Ah, get, get, good question. So everybody who gets a phone system license here, they are automatically entitled to a DID number. So once you get a phone system license, license you're entitled to a DID number. Again, that's, in, that's included with the service. So whether or not you're using you know, a third-party carrier, They'll give you a DID. Likely, you'll you'll have to pay for that DID from the carrier, though, right? Whereas in Microsoft, that charge is coming as part of that phone system license. Did I answer your question there? Uh, yes. Also, I, I was uh, quick question. It does work with just having like an IP phone or something. It doesn't have to have a computer connected to it. That's correct. So there is a there is a you know, Teams compatibility and hardware list that is available on Microsoft site. There's a there's a number of devices that are out there that are Teams compatible, but you don't need the Teams client. Like you don't need to be at a uh, 
you know, at a laptop or a desktop to be able to use the, the client. You know, Teams is available on, you know, all mobile um, Android and iOS phones. So you can install it on the mobile phone and use it from there. Um, or if you wanted to buy one of those handsets uh, from one of these, uh, you know, vendors, more than welcome to do it. It's really just a plug and play phone into the internet, whether it's wireless or wired. And you log in with your Office 365 credentials and off you go. Pretty pretty handy. So the team's number travels with you pretty much wherever you go, as long as you have internet access. That sounds amazing. It's pretty handy, I'll be honest. I've been using this service probably for four years now, since just before Teams even came came available. We were using Skype, Skype for Business. That's so, yeah, I've been using it for, for quite a while. And it just keeps getting better and better. Um, and as you know, if you're using Teams today, it's it's almost like, it's almost like a no brainer, you know, to turn on Teams voice. It just it just makes things so much so much more so much, so much simpler, right? Um, and I get it. You know, there's going to be a lot of companies out there who have contracts with either carriers or they've they've signed a contract with some other carrier, and they can't necessarily turn on the voice feature just yet because they it just doesn't make sense financially. Um, but you know, it's 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 all it's all there. It's all possible, and it it works works great. Honestly, it works great. Um, and the collaboration features with Teams, uh, if you're using it, yeah, it just it just works. <laughs> That's pretty much all I can say. Yeah, I'll pause there for a second if anybody has any specific asks or questions around it. Okay, let's, so let me go back and see if I think things I missed. So that's for the, for the most part, that is what that's what's needed to, to turn on Teams Voice, right? Now, if you're coming from a if you're coming from a service like a, a different carrier and you've got an on-premise, you know, PDX system, maybe we can talk about some of the different scenarios that you might might face, right? Or the ones that at least that I've seen in the in the recent recent past. So, you know, some of you might have, you know, Skype for Business on-prem that you've been using as your phone system. Uh, you've either got a service with a different carrier, which is a very basic service, just gives you telephony and maybe some conferencing. Um, and the the third one is, uh, yeah, you got Skype for Business, you've got uh, just regular carrier, maybe you have a voice over IP system. Uh, maybe you're even using, you know, one of the other like Zoom, right? Zoom has been a, a big one. Some some companies are using Zoom at this point, but then they start using Teams for collaboration, and then they wonder why. Okay, why why don't I just move over into Teams and start using it as my voice system? So, moving it, doing doing the project, and actually getting the phone system set up is not um, is not that complicated. Now, if you're coming from Skype for Business on prem. And you want to do a, a very nice transition with a you know in, in a hybrid model, uh, and move users over slowly, and move move the IDs over and that stuff like that. Absolutely can be done, um, and that you know you know your uh, your identity with your your Skype for Business and your Active Directory can all be moved over into the Teams phone system, no problem. Um, you know we've done projects for. You know, really small customers up to you know enterprise customers, and it's a it's pretty much it's a pretty smooth transition to be fair. I mean, it doesn't you know for if it's a small organization, it doesn't take a long time to actually do it. Uh, some of the things to be aware of if you if you have a, a phone system are you know one do I have any kind of contact center or call center requirements, which in this case, if if you have specific call center requirements, you may you may require a, you know a, an add-on to the team's uh, phone system that you know because they don't do specific call center requirements just yet. But I, I assume in the future that you know Microsoft is going to adopt uh, or enable some of those features for for customers. Uh, I see another question that uh, Clark. 
Uh, yes. Go for it. Uh, I, I appreciate this time. Thank you all for, for having this first off. Uh, no problem. The, the porting of phone numbers, is that something that, that y'all, would we work with the carrier side? Yes. Yeah, we work with uh, you as the customer and the carrier, right? There's a there's a process for doing this. Every carrier has got their their kind of requirements, but really it's just a form um, so that the needs to be filled out. Is the same as as what it always has been. Yeah, basically, it's basically the same so, as it always has been. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, it's just now that Microsoft, right? Microsoft is now a carrier. That's that's pretty much what's changed, right? That's, so we can port the, we would port these to the Microsoft carrier service. You could, yeah, right. So what I've in my experience, where Microsoft being the carrier makes um, sense, I guess more than it, than it wouldn't make sense as being a carrier. Typically, the user account kind of gets divided. You know, maybe under fifty users is more kind of geared towards customers to have Microsoft be the carrier. And once you get over 50, 75 and, and above, direct routing with that, you know, uh, outside third party carrier uh, seems to make a little bit more sense financially, right? And, and tying the two together. So that's just in my experience anyway. Makes sense. Thank you very much. Sure. And really, honestly, the uh, the from a project standpoint, whether or not you use a a third party carrier or you use just Microsoft as the carrier, it really makes no difference, um, except for generally in times that it takes to to port numbers. Right? Depends. That really comes down to the carrier. And what we've noticed is that you know some carriers can port over, you know, in a couple of days. Some carriers it takes a couple of weeks. So once you fill out that form and you know make the request they'll tell you like all right we got we're going to port numbers on uh, this day they don't really give you they don't really give you a lot of uh, options from that standpoint so you you pretty much have to do all your work ahead of time to get ready for that that time that, that port over sorry if you already covered this but is there hardware required on site if you're porting to a carrier ah good actually no so with the Teams phone system, it is a full cloud uh, solution. There's no hardware required on premise other than if you want to have like conferencing equipment in those boardrooms or if you want to have handsets, um, you know, for the end users, stuff like that. So it's There's all end user related. It's all end user related, right? As long as you, all you need is a, a an internet connection pretty much to use it. Kim is typing a message, so pause for that. Uh, let me go back and see if there's anything. I Actually, my question is regarding the new 911 laws coming up. How do y'all address that on this platform? Is it different if it's Microsoft um, platform versus the, the direct routing, or how is that addressed? Uh, it's a good question. It's a really good question. So. Microsoft has their way inside Teams to address like 911 calling. So you have to put a user, um, every user has to have an address for 911. So this is where it gets a bit confusing because a user might be addressed at HQ for the company, right? But they may not be at HQ. So that if there's a 911 call ever from there, it's kind of pinging the, the corporate office, right? Uh, if there's an emergency, the other way to do it, what I've noticed from other carriers, carriers have also their 911, um, I guess, service in this case. So they would provide an additional service for 911 in some cases, right? So you have to chat with the carrier on, on what they're, you know, what they have available at that point, because all of the calls are being routed through them and their their SBCs, and they may have some kind of features and, and benefits that. Uh, they're offering as part of that, but I think where it's going is that there's going to be some sort of uh, tracking at at some point to be able to kind of pinpoint where the user's at. But I don't think we're not really there yet. 
So will and Microsoft hopefully... have their own solution for that as well? Because if I went with Microsoft, you know, one day I'm sitting in my office and the other day I'm sitting in my home in a different city. And yeah. it's my understanding that that all has to be in place and operational by January the 6th. Sorry, what has to be operational by January 6th? The emergency January. response locations to be compliant. Oh. Ray oh, bomb, oh, the right, Ray right. bomb legislation. Do y'all, okay. does Microsoft Teams have something on board right now that would do that? Well, when you're when you're setting up the system, it has to be configured, right? They, they, it's a requirement inside Teams to configure 911 for every user. So in that sense, yes, I'd say it, it, it does. Um, I'm not familiar with that particular law that you're referring to, um, but yeah, it might be because it, it, is it a it's a it's a U.S. thing, I presume. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Again, yeah, I'm not familiar with that particular law, but maybe Michael or. Um, so Kim, that was Kim that asked, correct? Yes. Kim, if if you could follow up to me directly. Uh, via email with that, I can do some digging on my end because I'm honestly not 100% sure, but I am happy to do some digging, um, especially with some of our product specialists. So if, if you could reach out, um, you know, with that that question in writing so I could pass it on to them, I'd, I'd love to be able to start digging into that for you right away. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. back here. My machine is quite slow. Anyone have questions? Um, has anyone played with the solution at all? Try tried it out, tried to set it up for themselves? Play with the Voice solution? No, oh, Craig. Excellent. How has your experience been so far? Um, yeah, it's been good. Um, our on-premise phone system really wasn't adequate uh, when everybody started working from home in our corporate office. So we moved some users. Some users we just forwarded their phone numbers to their cell phones. Other users we applied some Teams voice licenses. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been good. Um, I mean, I think the biggest kind of um, obstacle we kind of see is, you know, a lot of people, I guess, aren't ready for soft phones. Um, and with the desk phone solution, you know, it, you know, it's kind of one of those, um, com it's a little more complicated than our existing desk phone solutions and that users have to sign into that desk phone. And then we're kind of debating, do we want users with their desk phones to have pins to unlock their desk phone? Um, because now the desk phone includes calendar information, you know, um, for mm -hmm. a user. Whereas before your desk phone, just all it did was make a phone call. You know, now there's a lot more information. Right. So do we need to have those phones locked, you know, in that user's right. way? And and kind of how to manage that. But but overall, it, it's been a, a good experience. And and for a corporate office, we even you know have plans to migrate over to a completely Teams phone solution for the 75 people or so that are in our corporate office. Very nice. Very cool. Um, so you have so I think now are those phones that you had. That you did you end up buying you bought new phones i presume to get this set up well we haven't or migrated something. over so our kind of plan is to kind of reach out to our users and kind of offer different solutions depending on what that user is most comfortable with mm -hmm. i mean we're really just kind of pushing bluetooth earpieces you know for yeah. most users yeah. i kind of feel that's kind of the best option um but you know we have folks who can't figure out Bluetooth or just don't want an earpiece or a headset, very, I guess, traditional phone users. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for those users, you know, we'll be purchasing uh, most likely Yealink phones. Um, we kind of yeah. tried out a couple in Yealink. They seem super affordable, pretty easy yeah. to use. Um, again, though, even for those users who kind of just want, I just want a phone on my desk that works, um, you know, we still have to kind of train them, you could say on at least initially how to log into that phone, you know, mm -hmm. so that it's set up for them. Um, and one thing we haven't really kind of um, gotten into yet 
and it'll be interesting. So those users who do want a desk phone, when they do receive a phone call, it is going to ring their desk phone, which is great and what they expect. It's also going to ring the team's application on their computer. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have two ringing devices on their desk. Yeah. So I don't know quite yet kind of how we're going to handle that. But, um, but yeah, but yeah, we, we have plans in place. So now it's kind of figuring out which user wants a Bluetooth device versus a desk phone. Um, and then we'll probably be implementing in uh, around January or late December. Wow, that's great. Um, it's interesting because, yeah, I guess the nice thing, it's kind of a double-edged sword, like you said, is you get the, you have the ability to ring all those different devices uh, at the same time. Um, but then, again, you could be a bad thing, too. <laughs> you don't want all those yeah. devices to ring. Um, for me, I've got my, my laptop that rings, and then I've got my mobile that rings as well. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, in my home office, like I am kind of demoing. So I have a Yaylink desk phone here that I'm signed into. Yeah. I'm sending on my computer. I have the app on my phone. I get a call and three different things are ringing at my desk. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, um, and, yeah and, you know, and kind of follow up on the Ray Bomb thing, you know, I don't know the details on that uh, completely, but I do know because my understanding of Ray Bomb wasn't so much when a user is in one location versus another, but ensuring that um, you don't simply have only an address. So, for example, yeah. that, you know, it, it, the emergency location includes things such as building number at address and perhaps yeah. even room number or floor. And those are things that when you're setting up the emergency contact information within Teams, um, you can use like address line too to give those yeah. specific details. And, and we've kind of done that as well. So we have three buildings on a corporate campus. And depending on where that user is, you know, we have it assigned that their emergency contact information is in either building 100 or 200 or 300. Right. The, the key there is that you had to put that in manually, right? And you had to fill it out manually. Yeah. Yeah, we have yeah. to fill out manually, um, and so we kind of create those emergency locations, and then right. after we uh, have a new number, you know, whether we port it over or just request a new number, um, we can then assign that location to that number and then assign it to that user, or after it's assigned to that user, um, assign the emergency location. But yeah, Teams does require the assigning of the emergency location mm -hmm. as, as you assign the numbers. And again, the other outside of that um, is that carriers offer a, di a similar type service or uh, on top of it if you're using direct routing. Great. I hear somebody, uh, someone trying to speak. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> Um, let's see, I guess one thing we can chat about is, you know, depending on where you guys are in your, your cycle or adoption, adoption cycle for Microsoft Teams, you know, there might be, depending on, you know, your organization, you may, you may end up qualifying for some of these, um, workshops that Microsoft offers, um, that can help you kind of, you know, with this adoption of, of Teams or Teams telephony, Teams meetings, um, things like that. So, you know, reach out to, to Michael, myself, or anybody on the uh, on this call, Betty, and we'll try to help you find out if that if you do qualify for one of those workshops. Um, and we do we are we do have the ability to to work with you on some of those workshops. You know, if you were looking for a partner to work with to help you adopt Teams. Or to to configure teams for the organization. Again, ProServe IT is is very capable of doing that. We've done it for lots of organizations, um, and we have lots of different offers that are available for you know small to medium to large large customers. And uh, we can work with you on a like a custom basis to figure out you know what your requirements are to help you to to do that migration uh, for the whole company if you like. And that's pretty much, I think that's about it. That's what I wanted to cover. Quick question there. 
Clark, do you have a question? Uh, the, have have y'all mentioned anything about the bandwidth requirements? I haven't talked anything about bandwidth particularly uh, on this call, but yes, bandwidth is something that we don't talk about a lot anymore just because, you know, most in most cases, bandwidth is uh, it's just something that everybody has access to, right? Full bandwidth. But there are certain circumstances where, you know, if you're in a pretty remote spot and, and bandwidth may not be, be very good if you're in a remote area, um, it is definitely something to consider. And we do go through, you know, basic check um, either on a call, you know, with you as a customer or when we get engaged, we just verify that, you know, the locations where the users are going to be, they have adequate bandwidth to support the team's team's voice calling. Um, is there a per like per call typical how much bandwidth it takes on a call or what is needed? Yeah, for? yes, there is. Microsoft has a, a site or a link that we can send you to, to show you kind of what the basic requirements for an audio call and video call. These are just kind of like averages that they've found over time but yeah there are some kind of specs that you need um okay thank sure. you yeah anybody else have questions about uh, you know anything that we've gone through today um, or getting started with teams or where where you guys are at? Ask questions about where you're at today in your your journey. I'm happy to to help with that. And I think we'll, if not, we'll move on to I guess our last step is that we have. So what we have come up with is basically just a really an offer for customers who are really just trying to get started and not sure where to go. Um, we've got a small engagement here that just helps you kind of get started out with a couple new users, you know, just to kind of test test and play with, with the service. So we'll set up a couple users up to probably five to 10 users with user accounts on Teams Voice, um, set it up for you. We'll, we'll initiate, you know, a small, you know, auto attendant in queue for you um, just to get started. And then you can play with it for a bit of time if you're in like a trial mode or even if it's in, in production, if you have a really small organization. Um, that's kind of what this is intended for. And then from there, if you have more customer requirements to get things set up and, and moved over, then we would look at that as more of a custom engagement. But at least we wanted to have something to, to show you, to offer if, if you're you know, new, new to teams and getting started. And with that, I think if there are no other questions, I will turn it back over to Betty and Michael and team or and go from there. Anybody Thanks, have anything Tony. else? Problem. I will follow up with everyone to send you a recording. We'll get that link for uh, uh, information on the bandwidth and also information on our calling plans pilot and services. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me or uh, Tony. I'm sure uh, yep. Mike You're also. Welcome. I'm going to put my email here on the chat. Yep, and you can also notice here, you can also reach out at cloud at proservit.com. That's kind of a general mailbox that we're monitoring um, if you have questions. Yes, so if you do use you. cloud ID, just uh, mention that you were part of this uh, lunch and learn, and we'll get back to you. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, um, you know, to Tony and Betty for for doing this with me, and and thanking everybody who joined. Um, guys, again, feel free to follow up with the ProServe IT team. Uh, you can always follow up with myself again. Just really wanted to be able to provide, uh, you know, a a comfortable environment for you guys to to feel um, comfortable with asking questions about these things. So again, if if you have any more guys, feel free to ask before you hop off. Otherwise, yeah, you can follow up with any of us, and and we're happy to continue the conversations after today.
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for thank you for the opportunity for me to come and chat with you guys. Um, I know that a lot of this stuff is is new and it's it gets confusing sometimes. So, you know, just hearing it from somebody who's been doing it for a couple of years, uh, it helps. But happy to set up a time to call, you know, talk with you guys, you know, separately. Uh, if you want to go do a little bit deeper dive, you know, feel free to reach out. Thank you.